Hello scrapbooking friends and thank you for joining me for another process video. Today's layout is for day 12 of Scrap Timber and the prompt today is cut files, dies, punches and I'll be using dies today. Um, it's the memory keeping event that takes place in September and it's um, there's a YouTube playlist and the Facebook group and the hashtag is Scrap Timber 2022 across social media. So today's layout is a uh, 12 by 12 and it's a uh, my own design and I'm using these papers from that lipstick basics paper pad that I've used before. I've got this little Union Jack flag here, I've got some Bramble Fox pieces, I've got some Dotty Bat Flare musical pieces and some die cut pieces here and a stamp here with uh, glasses. So the glasses stamp came from this Daily Flash October afternoon stamp set which was from 2013 so it's quite old. Um, yeah, and I don't suppose it's available now. My die cut pieces are from this Sizzix set here. So I've done the record and the 50s. And this is, yes, yeah, Sizzix uh, dies. Archival ink in jet black. So I've mounted this sheet onto the other sheet, both from the same paper pad. And I'm thinking that... This piece here is just an ordinary piece of white cardstock, which is going to go at the bottom here for my journaling. And um, the photos, I think, are going to go here. I've mounted the photos onto white textured cardstock already, just so that they stand out a little bit from the background. So I'm thinking the Union Jack flag will probably go here with the London sign there, or the London word. And then these records, I'm actually going to be layering onto them even though, you know, should probably use them as an actual record. But I'm actually going to layer onto them to create a small embellishment cluster at the top of my page here, which is something I like to do. So um, it's going to look something like this. Very simple page again. I'm whizzing through my simple pages at the moment, quite enjoying them, getting older photos scrapbooked. So the, these photos here are... Um, the crickets, Buddy Holly's crickets. So Jerry Allison, Buddy Holly's drummer here, passed away recently. And I just thought I'd document the fact that, you know, I saw the crickets quite a few times over the years. And um, yeah, got some photos with them. So here is Jerry Allison. This is him here. Joe Maudlin and Sonny Curtis. Sonny Curtis is probably not the most well-known member of the crickets and he is still alive. The others have now passed away. He was with he was with Buddy Holly before, uh, you know, as a cricket um, in the early days. And also he carried on with the crickets after Buddy Holly passed away. It's probably not so well known, like I've said, but you may know him. Well, you may know some of the songs that he wrote, one of which was the theme tune to the Mary Tyler Moore show. So that's something that he's well known for. But he's, he, he's you know, he wrote quite a lot of songs, and including some with Buddy Holly. And like I've said, Jerry Allison was the drummer. So, um, yeah, I, do, I always like to document these things. I've seen many um, original acts from the 1950s over the years in this country. And, um, yeah, it's always such a thrill to see the crickets just because um, they're amazing anyway. But also, you know, they performed with Buddy Holly, didn't they? So, yeah, incredible. And um, a couple of days ago, I was at the Mayflower Theatre in Southampton to see David Essex. Those of you in the UK will know who he is. He's a singer from the 1970s. And um, at that actual theatre, the Buddy Holly and the Crickets performed there during their tour in March 1958 at that actual theatre. It was called the Gaumont in those days. It's now called the Mayflower. So whenever I go there, it's always like a real thrill, you know, to just think that, oh my gosh, you know, Buddy Holly graced that stage in the 50s. Just incredible. And the reason why I'm using this flag here and the London title, so this show is actually in London. And um, whenever the Crickets came over here, to, to perform they just always absolutely loved coming to England and they used to tell the stories about how much they like love being in England and you know all our little kind of like things that they liked about us so yeah um, that's the reason why I'm adding the London and the England thing because obviously they were performing over here but also just the fact that they absolutely loved coming over here so um, to you know to do gigs and that as part of the rock and roll scene over here so you might notice here for, if Scrappy Cathy's watching Texas flag there, my Texas flag, which I 
actually did purchase in Texas when I was there for the Body Holly Festival many years ago and that was signed by all of the crickets and uh, yeah th these photos were taken in 2002 so 20 years ago and my visit to Texas was actually 1998 so even further ago even longer ago so enough chatting let's get this layout done shall we looks very straightforward i think i've pretty much as i've been chatting to you pretty much put it all together the journal is going to go on here and this is going to say what i've just said to you about uh you know seeing the crickets and it being such a thrill and also this particular gig particular show that we saw was um yeah just like one of the most one of my most favorite actually i think i'm going to use my little sticker maker here very rarely use this as i run sticker maker and actually, once it's uh, once it's actually ended, uh, the refill's finished, I probably won't get another one because although I like it a lot and it's great for this kind of thing, it, it there's a lot of wastage involved with it. I think, you know, when you pull it through, there's so much wastage, especially if you're only creating quite a small sticker. I don't know if you've seen this before, but you you you, you, you push it through, you burnish it, you take this, this coating off. And then when you pull this piece up here, it's a sticker. So there is actually a little bit of sticky stuff around there because obviously I didn't burnish it properly. So I'll just try and do that now. <laughs> Hopefully that won't be a problem. So I'm going to pop this piece here, 50s piece there. And also on here, you'll see that, you know, it's done in different colours and oh gosh. Yeah, I'd quite like to do that. But yeah, not 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 for this layout because this layout's kind of, there's a lot of black and white going on. But um, yeah, I probably should... Uh, have a go at doing that and making more use of those in the future i won't use my sticker maker for this piece i'll just uh, stick it down i think i just lost the middle just lost the middle of my of that piece and yeah i'm not really sure where it went to be honest did it go inside did it go inside while it all uh did it go inside here or can we see it on the page somewhere i think it'd be okay it doesn't matter because you're not really going to see it at the middle of this one already came out and I tore it a little bit because uh, on my plate here, I put I put it on my plate with this piece on top, and the actual foam pad from that piece had stuck to it, and tw and I sort of lifted. It wasn't in the right place. So I lifted it, and when I lifted it, it did tear a little bit. So yeah, it didn't go too well. I think we're okay. Don't think that really matters there. Don't think you can really tell. Get these glasses down. Obviously, these glasses are, you know pay homage to Buddy Holly even though they're pink but the reason why I'm using them is because Sonny Curtis here has got a little bit of pink in his t-shirt so I thought yeah may as well use them I use glasses quite a lot on Buddy Holly pages or I have done in the past when I've been documenting our trips to Texas or going to see the Buddy show and I always like to use spectacles on them it's kind of one of the things he was famous for being proud of wearing his spectacles Right, we'll stick this down. No foam pieces or anything. I'm going to stick that down first, then I'll do the photos. I think the photos are just going to go like this. I want them to be, you know, similar spacing at either side there. I think that can go there. This one down. I've got the date on the back there, 24th of November, uh, 24th of November yeah, 2002. That was a winter gig. Probably a winter dance party type gig. I think that's fine. Pop that down. Pop this piece down. Just line it up a little bit because I do want it to look a little bit straight. And of course this, this pattern here plays with your eyes a little bit, doesn't it? So I think if I get everything else straight, it's not so bad. Pop the London piece over here. I'm not sure if you can. It's very easily readable, but uh, I know it's there. And I think in real life it's readable. So, yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to do was stamp that, those glasses. So, um, yeah. Quick and simple layout. <laughs> More chatting than anything, I think, today. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think I'm going to just put those here. Stamp those here and maybe a shadow stand there and then just do my journaling here and uh, 
think that will be the layout finish. I'll add the date. I haven't got a date stamp that actually goes back that far. I did used to have one, but I don't think it's very good quality. So oh, like a roller date stamp that would have had the 2002 year on it. But I don't think it's very good quality. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I kept it. I can't actually find it. So I don't think I kept it. Stick that down properly. So I think that's finished. The two musical pieces from the flare hut. This little flag was just in a packet that mum gave to me of just little flags of around the time of the Jubilee this year. Obviously Bramble Fox set there, like a London set. This this would have come from a different Bramble Fox set. I just pulled it out of like a summer set, I think it was, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, just a two photo layout, two different size photos here. If anyone struggles with scrapbooking that. Um, very simple sort of grid with the piece below there for the journaling. And just kind of like three embellishment clusters, simple embellishment clusters, because the papers are obviously very um, loud and, uh, you know, like I say, they mess with your eyes a little bit, don't they? So I think a little bit of plain um, cardstock at the bottom here can draw your eye to the journaling. So, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, quite effective. All stuck down. So I'm just going to lay out finished. <laughs> The die cut prompt or die prompt for Scrap Timber, which is this the two records and the 50s bit here, they're the ones that I've used for that prompt. Um, no punching on this one and no cut file. I think it's, I'm sure it's, you know, you can use either, you don't have to use all three. It'd be quite difficult to use all three. Um, yeah, so um, Scrap Timber, go and have a look. And once again, uh, stay safe. Thank you for joining me. Take care and I shall see you next time.